All right, welcome everybody to SAT Reading Crash Course. This is day two, uh, part one. We've got Caden with us. We're going to pick up where we left off in the day one session uh, with one of the new passages. But first, before we do that, I want to read or reread my rules for reading. So, Caden, I've got those up on the screen right now. If you'll uh, read my rules for reading, please start with uh, rule number one, loud and proud, please. All right. Look up every word you don't know. From this point forward, do it. Yeah, and that applies not only to the reading that we're doing here in the class, um, but any reading on your own for school or just any reading you do for pleasure. If you see a word you don't know, you just need to look it up. And I think if you might recall from the last, the last session, if you know what the words meant in that Jane Austen passage, you understood the ideas being communicated by the author. And if you didn't know what the words meant, you probably didn't know the ideas being communicated by the yeah. author. So I would say 90% of reading comprehension is just vocabulary. So you've got to boost your academic vocab. So, but if you do that, if you start looking up every word that you know, in all your reading, basically every everything you're doing for your classes suddenly becomes SAT prep. So that's a really efficient way to, to boost your vocab. It's that or do like vocab worksheets and nobody wants to do that. So just look up words you don't know. Go ahead and read rule number two. All right. Read for meaning. Don't just rush through text. Slow down, reread when necessary, and ask yourself what ideas is the author trying to communicate here? Yeah, now of course, um, you know, when it comes to an actual timed test, you know, you're going to have to work within the time limits and you're going to have to do some, some faster scanning. There's no way around that. But right now at this stage in the game, we're starting with untimed work. And most of the work that you're going to be doing is untimed to start. We'll talk about timed work a little bit later in the, in the class um, toward the end. But, uh, but right now, take your time. You just, you've got to read well. Um, but you've got to do that, you know, untimed first, reading well. Later, you can, if you, you know, if you want to add the timed element, um, you can do it, but you can't do it until you're just doing it well first in general. So we're going to take our time. We're going to chew on some language here and try to understand what ideas the author is trying to communicate. And then uh, go ahead and read the last rule as well, because I think we started answering some questions in the last session. We're going to answer some more today. Go ahead and read that rule for me, please. All right. Look for evidence in the text to support the correct answer choice and to eliminate incorrect answer choices. You never need to bring in your opinion or think about what might sound reasonable. Focus on the text. Okay, great. And we're going to practice uh, all those rules today, especially starting with rule number one and two as we read the new passage. So I've got that passage here. Um, I know, uh, I think we read maybe the first paragraph in the last session. Let's just kind of start over with this one here. And uh, starting with the introduction, read it for me, please. And uh, we'll discuss some vocab and kind of just process this language a little bit together. All right. This passage is adapted from, uh, how do you say it? Marina Corbis. Marina. Okay. Yeah, and I would never worry about, like, don't beat yourself up over the pronunciations of names or, like, proper nouns or anything like that. I actually All coach right. some students that they see something real complicated, just read it as, like, MG. You know, just don't, don't worry about pronunciations too much, you know. All right. The nature of the future dispatches from the social structed world. Yep. All right. Keep going, please. All right. Visitors to the Soviet Union in the 1960s and 1970s always marveled at the gap between what they saw in state stores, shelves empty or filled with things no one wanted, and what they saw in people's homes, nice furnishings and tables filled with food. Okay. Now, I think we what? talked about that, that word state in the last uh, session. Do you recall what that, what that word means here? What people saw in state stores? Um... I know we went over. I'm trying to think yeah, of how. Yeah. What's really what is state-run healthcare? What does that mean? Like government. Government. That's ab that's it exactly, right? Uh, state's another word for government, and I know it's a little okay. bit confusing, right? Because we talk about like the 50 states, yeah. but they're called states because they have, you know, at least a semi-independent government with a governor and a legislature and state supreme courts and everything. So each state does have its own government. And that's why they're called states. So state stores here just means government stores. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Um, keep reading. All right. What filled the gap? A vast informal economy driven by human relationships, dense networks of social connections through which people traded resources and created value. Soviet people didn't plot how they would build these networks. No one was teaching them how to maximize their connections the way social marketers eagerly teach us today. Their networks evolved naturally out of necessity. This was the only way to survive. Yeah, what does the author mean here by networks? Their networks evolved naturally. What does that mean? Um, like connections. Yeah, just connections between people. That's it. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, good. Let's keep reading, please. Okay. Today, all around the world, we are seeing a new kind of network of relationship-driven economics emerging, with individuals joining forces sometimes to fill the gaps left by existing institutions, corporations, governments, educational establishments, 
sometimes creating new products, services, and knowledge that no institution is able to provide. Okay, I'm going to stop you real quick. Whoa, that's a long sentence. Lots of vocab there. Okay. So let's discuss this. Um, a new kind of, uh, let's see, ne- uh, kind of network of relationship-driven economics is emerging. What is economics? Um, like the, how, uh, what is it? Let me think of a way to word how, let, 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 me, let me ask you another question. That might be a, a better question. What's an economy? Because economics like, is the state uh, of economy. The, the state of how like everything works together to be one, like, what is it? You're on the right track, like, and that's not, a, yeah, that's, that's not a bad definition. I mean, you said how everything works together, basically, which is, which yeah. is a pretty good definition for economics. A lot of students want to ask what economics is. They say, oh, it's money. Which is interestingly just part of economics, and it's a really small part, and not even an essential part of economics. Even though everybody focuses on money or the stock market or something like that, because you can have an economy without money. What do you call an economy without money? Uh, it's a type of system. You might have learned it before. This is like middle school, like social studies. They call it the barter system. Right? Oh. If you're just trading goods for goods and services for services, right. right? Like, oh, I'll trade you like seven chickens for a goat or something like that, right? Like that's right. a barter system. So you can have an economy without money, actually, if you're just trading goods and services for goods and services. So economics isn't necessarily money. Um, economics, I think good definition is kind of like it's the whole system, which is what you hinted on, right? It's everything. It's all the work people do. The whole system by which people provide goods and services that people want and need. That's it. So it's pretty much everything people do for work is all part of the economy. It can involve money, but some doesn't necessarily have to involve money. Um, most of the time these days, of course, you know, money's really useful as a, you know, to, as a, as a way of transferring value. But, um, but the whole, it's a very, I mean, it's a big concept, right? It's, uh, right. it's everything people do, right? To provide goods yeah. and services that other people want and need. Okay. All right. So that's what they mean here by relationship driven economics. Um, and individuals joining forces sometimes to fill the gaps left by existing institutions. What's an institution? Um, like a organization. Like Absolutely. A Absolutely. Yeah, just an organization. Nothing fancy there. Um, let's see, with corporations, governments, and educational establishments. Do you know what a corporation is? Um, I mean, I, I kind of have like a basic idea. I don't know yeah, the exact yeah. definition of yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, you try it. What do, what do you think it means here? Probably just like a, almost a business. But yeah, like yeah. You, yeah. I mean, a business is a great example of a corporation, right? I mean, it's just like a group of people together, right? It comes right. to the Latin word corpus, which means a body, right? So I mean, like a body of people. But generally, you don't talk about corporations, you're talking about businesses, right? It's a, it's a, it's a common type of corporation. Absolutely, right? Um, good. And then it's sometimes creating new products, services, and knowledge that no institution or organization is able to provide. Does that sentence make a little more sense? Yes. Let's let's reread it now. Now that we've got a handle on those, on that vocabulary, go and take it from line right. fifteen again. Today, all around the world. Okay. Today, all around the world, we are seeing a new kind of network of relationship-driven economics emerging, with indiv- individuals joining forces sometimes to fill the gaps left by existing institutions, corporations, governments, educational establishments, and sometimes creating new products, services, and knowledge that no institution is able to provide. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, great. Let's keep reading. All right. Empowered by computing and communication technologies that have been steadily building village-like networks on a global scale, we are infusing more and more of our economic transactions with social connectedness. Mm, infusing. What does that word infusing mean here? Um, like, I don't want to say like injecting. Yeah, that's, that's kind that, of what it yeah, is. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Absolutely. It absolutely. Gross. No, it sounds weird and kind of medical, but you're absolutely right. Like, that's what it means here, right? We're injecting, putting in more. And more yeah. of our economic transactions, it is injected or infused, or it includes social connectedness. Okay. Does that make some sense? Yes. Okay. I like this idea here when it says empowered with computing and communi- communication technologies. I mean, clearly that's a reference to like the internet and computers in general. Um, I think a little bit about what I do, right? Like my business. I mean, I, I've got a couple of tutors working for me, but by, you know, most, it's mostly me and a computer Right. And, you know, I don't spend, you know, millions on advertising. I don't, I don't spend much of any on advertising. Most of the, the clients I get are a result of just 
word of mouth and a lot of social media and people making making recommendations over social media. Some people reached out to me over social media, but it's 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 you know I'm not a big business. I'm not a big corporation. In fact, I'm able to do a lot of things that big corporations can't do. Um, you know, they've got all sorts of policies and procedures in place. If I want to you know, create a new class, I can just create a new class. I can do whatever I want to do. And, and there's some, I think some power and, and flexibility in that, but also the fact that like with computing technology, I mean, I can post a video on YouTube and, you know, tens of thousands of kids can watch it and sometimes do, um, I can multiply my ability to instruct just with computer technology. So I think, I think I'd like to right. consider myself one of those empowered sort of individuals using technology. So does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Let's keep reading. All right. The new technologies are inherently social and personal. They help us create communities around interests, identities, and common personal challenges. They allow us to gain direct access to a worldwide community of others. And they can take anonymity. Anon yeah, that's a tricky word there. That's anonymity. 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 All right. Anonymity. Out of our economic transactions. Yeah, what, is that? what does that word mean? Anonymity. Um, well, it's... Probably from anonymous, so like yeah, yeah, that's it. So it's not unknown. Yeah, so so anonymous means without a name. Comes from the Latin word nomine, which means uh, uh, which means name. And uh, and so anonymous means without a name. So they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily unknown, but at least they're just unnamed. And so if they're taking anonymity out of our economic transactions, what does that mean practically? If they're taking anonymity out of our economic transactions, um, we we aren't sure what the um, economic. We're not sure like who we're getting stuff from. Well, I'd say the, I'd say the opposite is what it's saying now, right? If they were injecting anonymity into our economic transactions, we wouldn't know who. Oh, who out of it. Yeah, we're taking anonymity out of our economic transactions, which means what? Uh, that they're making that we know exactly. In what we're getting stuff. From. Yeah, we know exactly who's making stuff and where, where things are coming from, right? So, yeah. um, so this is, um, uh, yeah, we know, you know, you can buy things from Walmart. I mean, it's, obviously, you can still do that today, but, um, but if you want to like buy from like somebody's making like you know personalized handbags or something like that, and they're selling stuff on, you can buy from the guy making it and the guy marketing it. Right. Um, you know, so we, we know, at least we can know, right, the people that we're interacting with on, on an economic level now because of technology and social media. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, let's keep reading. All right. We can assess those we don't know by checking their reputations as buyers and sellers on eBay or by following their Twitter streams. We can look up their friends on Facebook and watch their YouTube videos. We can easily get people's on bias on where to, find the, or where to find the best shoemaker in Brazil the best. Um, programmer in India and the best apple farmer in our local community. We no longer have to rely on bankers or venture capitalists as the only sources of funding for our ideas. Do you know what a venture capitalist is? Um, it's like, I believe it's a person who goes out and he gives like really big like loans, but he has a bunch of interest. Yeah, yeah, exactly right there. I mean, he's an investor, right? And he invests yeah. in, in companies, you know, in, in startups and things like that. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Um, good. All right, let's keep going. We can raise funds directly from individuals, most of whom we don't even know, through websites that allow people to post descriptions of their projects and generate donations, investments, or loans. You know what Kickstarter is? Have you heard of that? Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, that's like a direct reference to Kickstarter, right? That's one of those websites that allow people to post descriptions of projects and generate donations. Yeah, for sure. Investments, yeah. that's so. Any questions about these ideas, or is this all making sense? Uh so far, it makes oh. pretty good sense. Okay, good. A lot easier vocabulary, right, than that oh, yeah. last Jane Austen passage, right? And 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 this is a, you know this is a good point, which is that um, you know the difficulty level of these passages varies dramatically on on the SAT. Um, some of the passages you're going to read, like you're just going to have no trouble with, uh, depending on your re on your reading level. This one, nothing too complicated. You know, there's a couple yeah. technical terms or some a little bit of higher level academic vocabulary. But there's some you know some passages you're going to read from like the 1700s or 1800s, and we're going to read some of them coming up that would like you just really have to know the vocab. Um, but this one's not too bad. I think it's it's a more recent passage and. and so yeah, that's modern. It's a lot easier to yeah, kind of grasp. Yeah, I, I agree completely. 
All right, let's keep reading, please. All right. We are moving away from the dominance and the depersonalized world of institutional production and creating a new economy call around social connections and social rewards, a process I call social structuring. Okay, I'm going to stop you real quick. Some vocabulary here I want to discuss. We're moving away from the dominance of the depersonalized world of institutional production. Yikes. Okay. Um, first, what does dominance mean? Uh, like top of the food chain like yeah totally yeah. yeah yeah we see the word like to dominate in there right yeah so it's been dominated until recently here by the depersonalized world of institutional production what does that mean um like almost like institutional depersonal uh like kind of it looks like it's like custom like how products almost like well maybe now it's a little bit more custom but so institutional means organizational right big organization right it's institution so we're moving away from the dominance of the depersonalized world of institutional production what does depersonalized mean um like it's the opposite of personal the opposite of personal absolutely right for you yeah impersonal right and we would Uh be synonymous right um very impersonal. Have you been to Walmart recently? Um, I mean, pretty recently. Okay. You could go into Walmart. You could pick up a product off the shelf. And first of all, without interacting with any human being there, right? And you can even check out using, you know, the robots at the checkout, you know, the automated checkout. Go in without interacting with a human being. You could pick up a product that you have no idea who made it, who touched it, even where it came from. All right. Although China's a probably a pretty good guess. But, but, um, but you still don't know the individuals involved. And walk out with ever, without ever having interacted with a human being or even, like, thought about a human being being involved in that process. Does right. that make sense? Yes. That's a pretty impersonal transaction. Okay. And the author is saying we're moving away from that dominance of that depersonalized world of institutional production. Things made by big corporations probably sold by big corporations. Does that make sense why that's the depersonalized yes. world of institutional production? Yes. And if you kind of break down that vocabulary, I think you can figure it out. Institutional means organizational, depersonalized, impersonal. I think you can kind of figure it out. Okay, take it from uh, and creating a new economy. All right. And creating a new economy around social connections and social rewards, a process I call social social structing. Yeah, and then this this author here just kind of makes up a word, whatever. That's it's that whole process of of building a new economy around social connections and social rewards. Okay, let's take it from line 51, others. Others have referred to this model of production as social commons-based or peer-to-peer. Not only is this new social economy bringing with it an unprecedented level of familiarity and connectedness to both our global and our local economic exchanges, but it is also changing every domain of our lives, from finance to education and health. Okay, okay. Um, this new social economy is bringing with it an unprecedented level of familiarity. What does unprecedented mean? Um, undefined? No, no, that's not it. Go and look up unprecedented real quick. It's a good word. All right. I see that pop up from time to time. Hear it a lot on the news. Everything is unprecedented on the news. Um, never done or known before. Yes, never before seen. Without precedent. Which means to proceed means to come before. So if it is unprecedented, nothing like this has ever come before. Does that make sense, Kate? Yes. Okay. So it is an un- we're seeing an unprecedented level, a never before seen level, of familiarity and connectedness to both our global and our local economic exchanges. Huh. Okay. Does that how you make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's good. that's weird though. I would almost argue that point because like. You all around it, like at least from what I've seen personally, it's yeah. not like I've ever looked into this. Yeah, it always seems like they're always putting in more like um, self checkout things, and that's yeah taking away from like talking face to face with people. But, yeah, uh, and it's interesting here, I, you know, and I don't I don't know how much you know the author's talking about like automation here, um, you know, per se. I you know I agree with you that things are becoming more and more automated. I don't think there's any way around that. But at the same time, like the things that we purchase, you know, first of all, I purchase a lot more online than I do going into stores. In oh, yeah. I buy every, everything I can on Amazon. I don't want to go out if I don't have to. But it's not just that. But like, you know, I purchase things from people that like I follow on Twitter. Um, 
you know, I, and, and I know, I mean, certainly like, you know, some of the things I like, I'm selling some classes online right now through YouTube. They're not buying, people aren't buying that. My, my classes from a big company, they're buying them, you know, from me. And, right. um, and it's because, you know, I'm the guy doing the instruction and I'm the guy with the sales page and, you know, but it's, 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 they're just buying it from a guy, which is interesting. And I, I'm not saying that it's, it's, that dominates things that you're buying now mostly from people. Um, you know, through social media or through the internet, but I, I would tend to agree our, our economic transactions are becoming more and more personal. I mean, even like, even Craigslist, for example, has connected people in a way that, you know, without the internet wouldn't be, wouldn't be possible. I mean, you could maybe say through like the classified ads in newspapers, if you even know what that means. Um, <laughs> have you even, do you know, have you ever even seen a classified section? I'm, I'm um, just curious. I probably, yeah. I just probably point. just really didn't pay attention. Yeah, yeah, of course not. Right? Um, but uh, but like Facebook Marketplace, for example. Like I'm not, oh, I've never yeah. bought a thing on Facebook Marketplace, but I see stuff on there, and I know people buy stuff on there, right? And that's like that's peer to peer. That's individual to individual economic transaction. Um, but like, there's like anybody can start a business today. Anybody. Yeah. Anybody. And I think we're going to see that trend. That makes more sense now. Yeah, I think we're going to see that trend in really kind of thinking of it, not in the whole of it like everything yeah i brought i brought up that example yeah i brought i brought up the walmart example as sort of like example like depersonalized you know but here i don't think her point is that we're not you know that things are becoming too automated because even like the classes i'm selling like on youtube for example i'm selling a tsi class tsi math class and that's that's 100 percent automated like i don't have to be involved in that transaction at all it's it's just cooking on its own but um but it's still they're still buying for me Buying from a system that I created, not some large corporation. Does that yes. make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, so interestingly, something automated could still be very personal. I, I mean, video, right? Online is very personal. It's almost as if the person is talking to you. It's almost magical if you step back and think <laughs> about it for a little bit. It's pretty amazing what we're able to do with technology and how we're able to communicate. Yeah, for sure. So, so just because it's automated doesn't necessarily mean it's impersonal, but but um, anyway. Um, okay. Let's take it from, um, let's take it from line 57. It is rapidly ushering. It is rapidly ushering in a vast array of new opportunities for us to pursue our passions, create new types of types of businesses and charitable organizations, redefine the nature of work and address a wide range of problems that the prevailing formal economy has neglected, if not caused. Okay. Ooh, a lot going on here, man. Let's talk some vocab here. It is rapidly ushering in a vast array of new opportunities. What does ushering mean? Um, to like bring in. Yes, yes, to bring in a vast array of new opportunities. What does array mean? Um, like assortment. Yeah, yeah, assortment, a spectrum. Absolutely. And this is the kind of thing, you know, I mean, obviously, if you don't know what the word means, look it up. But, you know, on like a timed test, you can kind of figure out like what word could you plug in there that would make sense of that statement? And given the context, yeah, I mean, assortment is, is absolutely perfect. Even if you don't know, like, the textbook definition of array. That's exactly what it means here. So they're bringing in a vast assortment of new opportunities for us to pursue our passions, create new types of businesses and charitable organizations, redefine the nature of work, and address a wide range of problems that the prevailing formal economy has neglected. What does prevailing mean? Um... You might have to look at one. Not sure of the actual definition. What do you I, think it means? I mean, so I, you, I think I've used this word before. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think it means here? Then we're going to look at the definition here in just a minute. Um, like what was uh, succeeding? What, what did you say? Succeeding. Succeeding. Yeah, go ahead and look up prevailing. I think you're 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 about spot on. It says, um, existing at a particular time, current, or yeah. having most appeal or influence. Yeah, the current formal economy, the existing formal economy, right? And therefore the succeeding, you know, therefore the previous, right? I mean, previous right. through to the present formal economy. That's what prevailing means, up to this point. The prevailing gotcha. formal economy has neglected. So a wide range of problems the prevailing or existing formal economy has neglected, if not caused. That's interesting. What do you think the author's talking about there? Um, like 
how past generations have handled uh, economy, I think. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And the thing it's it's that how it's been handled up until this point, right? Has has um, has that economy has neglected a wide range of problems, if not caused a wide range of problems. Shots fired. Yeah, yeah. Like what? What? Like what? Could you think of any specific problems that the author could be sort of referencing there? Um, I mean, maybe like global warming and stuff, but I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, possibly, right? I mean, like there's a big, you know, and I don't want to get into the, that that debate too much, but <laughs> but and and they will. I mean, gosh, you're, I promise you're going to read you know passages that that do address that. Um. Uh, but, uh, I'll, I'll leave others to debate whether, to what extent that's happening or not. But, um, but, but that is an issue that people are concerned about. Right. And I mean, people are buying electric cars now, right. Because yeah. they're concerned about, um, concerned about that issue. I think about like, you know, sweatshops and things like that. Right. Oh, yeah. Where, you know, like people, I think people, if they had a choice between making something made by like an individual craftsperson, right. Who's making a decent wage or like something made in a sweatshop. You know, if they really have a choice and they're not too worried about the price point, you know, I think people would tend to prefer supporting someone who's, you know, making things in decent conditions and, you know, an in, in individual maybe is trying to support yeah, himself, sure. right? As opposed to like, you know, something being pumped out by a big corporation, a big factory. I mean, there's a wide, there's a, it is, it's a wide range of problems. Um, you know, sometimes big businesses aren't great at meeting people's needs. And like, if an individual just sees a need that, um, isn't being, isn't being addressed. They can step in and kind of, you know, fit, fit in that need, um, or address that need. You know, you know the, the author here doesn't address it specifically, but I just kind of want to think in those terms that the authors, the ideas, the authors are yeah. discussing here. Try not to, they're trying not to get into all the controversial. Yeah. It could, yeah. Yeah. Right. And I think that would kind of detract from the, the focus of the, of the essay there, but, but this is kind of making that point. Let's yeah. take it from line 64, social structing. Social structuring is, in fact, enabling not only a new kind of global economy, but a new kind of society in which amplified individuals, individuals uh, empowered with technologies and the collective intelligence of others in their social network, can take on many functions that previously only larger organizations could perform, often more efficiently at lower cost or no costs at all, and with much greater ease. Wow, these are long sentences. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Let's talk some vocab, though. Um, so social structuring is in fact enabling not only a new kind of global economy, but a new kind of society in which amplified individuals, interesting term there. What does amplified mean? Um, like made bigger, like yeah. when you have an amplifier, it Absolutely. makes it louder. Yeah. Generally we think in terms of sound or music or something like that. And that's it, right? Individuals who are loud individuals, right? Yeah. Uh, individuals with a megaphone. Um, <laughs> It says individuals empowered with technologies and the collective intelligence of others in their social network can take on many functions that previously only large organizations could perform. Often more efficiently at lower cost or no cost at all and with much greater ease. So what's the idea there being communicated? That um, smaller businesses are just people by themselves can yes. do the same thing. Yes. That's that, not better. Yes. Yes, exactly. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you agree with that statement? Um. Yeah. I th I think if you have a, if you're able to use social media and like if you're very comfortable with how it works and yeah, like, all that, I think then definitely you could. You just have to have a certain um, amount of knowledge of it. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I I agree with the statement completely. I don't watch the news. Every once in a while, I'm just curious, like to see what conversations some people are having on the news. Very occasionally, but most I don't. I never watch the news. I don't read newspapers, um, or even newspapers online. I read Twitter, and there's a couple like there's a couple individuals, not organizations, individuals that I follow on Twitter. Individual like independent journalists that I follow, people I really respect who seem to really kind of have a handle on issues and, and are really good at kind of explaining what's going on, and they're able to predict what goes on. And this this describes them exactly, right? People with a collective intelligence of those in their social net, social network. I mean, if you've got like 500,000 followers, you've got a lot of potential in source of information coming up to you. Oh, yeah, for sure. And also your, and the ability to clearly communicate and project that information out to an audience. Yeah, I was, I was actually uh, going through YouTube and I watched a few videos about a guy and he would use different social media stuff and he would test how the ads work so he could uh -huh. 
do drop shipping and like yeah it was really cool to see how it all kind of yeah yeah works through all that yeah and that's something previously like only a large business would be able to afford an ad campaign yeah you know but like I've I've messed around with Facebook ads as well you know not sure if <laughs> successfully but but like anybody can do it now with not modern technology it is yeah, a very sure. interesting time to be alive there's a lot of opportunities that that the technology is opening up, and, and I think this this passage addresses that. Every once in a while, I read a passage. I think this is a fascinating passage. I really like economics. I would That's anticipate cool. most passages to bore you to death, but I like yeah. this one. I think this one's kind of interesting. And uh, yeah, this one kind of has you just like, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna keep reading. It's definitely the something. other one. You're just like, ah, I'll just yeah. keep reading. <laughs> yeah, and it's something you'll, you'll you'll find you'll find some more thought provoking, and, and and I would I would classify this as as one of those. Let's take it from line 72, social structing. Social structing is opening up a world of my colleagues, Jacquees Villi and Bob Johansson, described as the world of impossible futures, a world in which a large software firm can be displaced by weakened software hackers, and rapidly orchestrated social movements can bring down governments in a matter of weeks. Wow. Any questions about that? Um, no. Okay. I think, I think right. vocab is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is maybe about 10 years ago. There were a number of like uprisings in the Middle East. They call it the Arab Spring. And there were a lot of protests against um, existing governments there. And a lot of the protests were all organized over social media. This was just when Facebook and Twitter were becoming kind of big. And, huh. uh, and, and in fact, social media was, was blamed in part or was credited, I'll say, in part in, in helping to orchestrate the, the take, literally the takedown of governments, the overthrow of governments. Was in part because of social huh. media. Yeah. Um, let's keep reading. Line seventy-eight. The changes. The changes are exciting and unpredictable. They threaten many established institutions and offer a wealth of opportunities for individuals to empower themselves, find rich new connections, and tap into a fast-evolving set of new resources in everything from healthcare to education and science. Okay. Let's keep reading. Much has been written about how technology distances us from the benefits of face-to-face -face communication and quality social time. I think those are important concerns. But while the quality of our face-to-face -face interactions is changing, the countervailing force of social structuring is connecting us at levels never seen before, opening up new opportunities to create, learn, and share. Mm. What does that word countervailing mean? The countervailing force of social structuring. Um, opposing? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The counteracting, the opposing force of social structuring, and what what force is, uh, or what is social structuring opposing? Um, the what is it? Uh, there was a word we went over earlier, but um, read, the, read, read, uh, the read. Un anonymous, like not knowing what, what you're yeah. buying from yeah. the big Ab corporation. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, good. Okay. And here also, right, the, the, in, the, in that sentence, line 88, it says, well, the quality of our face-to-face -face interactions is changing, right? And it's true, right, that maybe we're not interacting as much, you know, person-to-person, -person, physically. Right, but right? you're still getting it across that you're going from, like, almost one person to another. Exactly, exactly. It's still individual to individual, just kind of through a different medium. Yeah. yeah. Any questions about that passage? No, okay. I don't think so. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Um, let's answer some questions. Okay. And this is, uh, we're going to use that cool. strategy, right, of of looking for evidence for all the answer choices based based in the text. So let's jump right into them. Go ahead and read question number 10 for me, please. All right. As used in line 10, plot most nearly means mm. mark, form, plan, or claim. Okay. Do you remember how to answer these questions? Yes, like this one, you would just input the word instead of plot. Ab absolutely, yeah. we got to go back to the sentence where plot is used in line 10, and we're going to plug in the answer choice there. And the correct answer choice has to make sense, and the incorrect ones won't make any sense. So let's go back to that sentence. We're going to start with uh, the word mark, and we're going to plug that in to the sentence in line 10. Do you see that? Yes. Start with, uh, start with line 9, the Soviet people. The, what was the wait, what were, so line mark, line nine? Or, yeah, the Soviet people okay, didn't. The Soviet people didn't plot how they would build these networks. Yeah, but we're going to plug in the word mark. The Soviet people didn't mark how they would build these networks. Mm, what do you think about that? Uh, 
I don't think so. No, it doesn't. Just, it doesn't flow very well. And it just doesn't make sense. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah. Assume if it's it. if you if you read it, and you're like, Ey. you know, it's probably not the yeah. right. It's just probably <laughs> not the right answer choice. So let's try um, answer choice B. Form. So we'll go back to line ten. Go ahead and read. You know, read the whole sentence. Where where that word is that? So take from the Soviet people again. Okay. It's form. The Soviet people didn't form how they would build these networks. What do you think about that? Doesn't flow perfectly, but does it it's make, not. The question is, does it make any sense? The Soviet uh, people didn't form how they would make these connections. It, it kind of implies that they like formed an idea of it, but I wouldn't say it. It doesn't state it directly. Well, look, if if you you clearly not you, you don't like it, if you can't eliminate it, don't eliminate it. Keep it. Okay. okay. Keep it. Because then we're going to be able to compare it to some other answer choices here. Do you want to eliminate it or not? Uh, we'll just keep it. Keep, let's keep it. If it's in question, just keep it. Just keep it. Okay. Go ahead and read answer choice C, plan. So we're going to plug that in for plan. plan. The Soviet people. All right. The Soviet people didn't plan how they would build these networks. How's that? That fits a lot better than that, the last one. That sounds good. Yeah, that... That flows. Does it make sense? Like in it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's keep it for sure. Answer choice D, claim. Okay. The Soviet people didn't claim how they would build these networks. Yeah, that does not flow. We can go ahead and take out yeah. B and D. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, D certainly is gone. And, now, and that's where I like, you know, you don't lose anything by keeping an answer choice. And you're going to be able to right. compare it to something. And you know, once you read C, you're like, oh, C works so much better, clearly. And it is answer choice C. It is. You know. Any questions about that? Um, no. Okay. But if you use that method of just uh, plugging in the answer choices, the vocab ones, that's easy points. Easy. But you just got to yeah, plug sure. it in. Right. But if you just saw the question like plot most nearly means, you might be like, I don't know, Mark, like you plot out a route or something like that, you know. Like, yeah. that's not the question. The question isn't what plot means. The question is, as used in that sentence in line 10, plot most of your limits. So you just got to plug it in. Okay? Okay. All right. Question number 11. Go ahead and read that. For me. The references to the shoemaker, the programmer, and the apple farmer in lines 37 through 40, we can easily community primarily serve to... Okay. What do you have to do before we answer this question? Go read the lines. Go read the lines. Absolutely. Right? So let's read the reference... Lines 37 through 40. So we're, we'll take it from we can easily right here in line 37. Okay. We can easily get people's advice on where to find the best, or where to find the best shoemaker in Brazil, the best uh, programmer in India, and the best apple farmer in our local community. Okay. Let's go back to the question here. Okay. The question says the references to the shoemaker, the programmer and the apple farmer in lines 37 through 40 primarily serve to do something. Now, here's the deal. When I read that sentence, I wasn't super sure, like, what they're talking about there. <laughs> right? I mean, like, I wasn't yeah. certain about the context. Like, why are they talking about programmers and apple farmers? I'm guessing it wasn't super so, clear to you it, either. It was to show that they could, that the social media can, like, or that just by, like, the search of something, you can, people are able to tell you, like, face-to-face, -face, like, how social media is, like, connecting, like, people one-on-one. -on -one, I yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right. Now, this is where I, I want to introduce sort of a new strategy maybe we haven't discussed a whole lot, which is that if you read a set of lines and it's not super clear what they're talking about or what they're referencing or what the context is, read some context. Read a little bit before those lines and read a little bit after those lines. You're not <laughs> limited. You're not limited to... Just reading the lines in the question. I mean, folks, you're obviously you're referencing those specifically. Read those for sure. But I say read a little bit before and a little bit after. So I actually want to read. I want to read the whole paragraph that those lines are in. Okay. okay? Take it from the new technologies. That's line twenty-seven. And I think that what the what they're referencing there in those lines thirty-seven through forty is going to be much more clear. All right. The new technologies are inherently social and personal. They help us create communities around interest, identities, and common personal challenges. They allow us to gain direct access to a worldwide community of others, and they can take an anonymity, anonymity mm -hmm. of our economic transactions. We can assess those we don't know by checking their reputations as buyers and sellers on eBay, or by following their Twitter streams. 
We can look up their friends on Facebook and watch their YouTube videos. We can easily get people people's advice on where to find the best shoemaker in Brazil, the best uh, programmer in India, and the best apple farmer in our local community. We no longer have to rely on bankers or venture capitalists as the only sources of funding for our for our ideas. We can raise funds directly from individuals, most of whom we don't even know, through websites that allow people to post descriptions of their products and generate donations, investments, or loans. Okay, good. Okay, let's go back to the question now, question 11. So the references to the shoemaker, the programmer, and the apple farmer in those lines, 37 through 50, primarily serve to, and I think your explanation I, you know, before I think made a lot of sense. Let's test these answer choices. Go and read A. Okay. Illustrate the quality of products and services in countries around the world. Is that what the reference is? It only goes into it a tiny bit, and it doesn't it doesn't say what the quality is. It's not yeah, about yeah. That. They're not just trying to talk about like how great the stuff is around the world. That's oh, yeah. not the Go point. Go to Brazil. Like, yeah, yeah really that's, that's not the point. No, absolutely. So answer choice A is gone. That, that's, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Try answer choice B. Emphasize the broad reach of technologies used to connect people. Does Do the references to the shoemaker, the programmer, and the apple farmer serve to emphasize the broad reach of technologies used to connect people. Yes. Absolutely. And how clear is that, by the way, when you read that the context of that paragraph? 100%. 100% clear. Right. So if you read something, you're not quite sure about it, what the significance of it is, read a little bit before, read a little bit after. Okay. And you probably didn't even have to read the whole paragraph. I wanted to make it really, really clear when you read the paragraph. But it's a right. really powerful strategy to use when they ask you to reference a specific set of lines. Read a little context, a little bit before, a little bit after. Let's double check the other. I want, I want, to, I want to always cycle through the answer choices. B looks really good. But let's try C and D. Let me hear C. Demonstrate that recommendations made online are trustworthy. That's not it. No, that's, that's laughable. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, no, try D. Call attention to the limits of the expansion of the global economy. What do you think about that? No. No. It, it, it's Why not, not anywhere near what it is. Yeah, it, it's the it's the opposite. They're yeah. not calling attention to the limits of the expansion. Not how limited the expansion. They're talking about the extent of the expansion. Yeah. It of how much it's expanded. Not the limits of the expansion. So that's really the opposite idea. But I'm telling you, kids are going to pick, they're going to pick two. They're like, oh, expansion of the global economy. Good. No, 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 no. That's not the idea. One word can throw this off. And here that word limits does. It's not the limits of the expansion. It's just the expansion. So it's answer choice B. Any questions about that? Uh, no. Okay. Awesome. Question number 12. Go ahead and read it for me, please. All right. The passages discussion of life in the Soviet Union in the 1960s and 1970s primarily serves to... Hmm. Okay. Um, let's... What do we need to do before we answer this question? Um read the answer choices i think before we or, read the answer choices should we, we should we should go back summarize the yeah let's go back to the discussion of life in the soviet union in the 1960s and 70s do you remember where that is in the passage uh, i believe it's at the very start it is at the very beginning let's read that paragraph again yeah, yeah okay Visitors to the Soviet Union in the 1960s and 1970s always marveled at the gap between what they saw in state stores, shelves empty or filled with things no one wanted, and what they saw in people's homes, nice furnishings and tables filled with food. What filled the gap? A vast informal economy driven by human relationships, dense networks of social connections through which people traded resources and created value. The Soviet people didn't plot how they would build these networks. No one was teaching them how to maximize their connections the way social marketers eagerly teach us today. Their networks evolved naturally, out of necessity. That was the only way to survive. Okay. Let's answer this question here. So the passage discussion of life in the Soviet Union in the 1960s and 70s primarily serves to... Go ahead and read answer A. Introduce the concept of social networking. Okay. Does that discussion of life in the Soviet Union in the 60s and 70s serve to introduce the concept of social networking? I mean... It kind of does. It kind of does. Let's look at that like it was paragraph. What's your, what's your that. evidence for that? That it, it, it introduces the um, concept of social networking. When it says um, the Soviet people didn't apply how they would build these networks, yeah. someone was that so on from there. It kind of yeah. 
Yeah, when it's referencing networks there, it's talking about social networks. Yeah. So we see some evidence for that. Let's keep it. Okay? Let's keep it. All right. If we can't eliminate, don't eliminate it. Um, okay, try answer choice B. Demonstrate that technology has improved social connections. Haven't even gotten into the technology yet. Yeah, Do you, let's look for some evidence for that. Do they discuss technology anywhere? Um, no. No. Not in that paragraph. You're absolutely right. Yeah, they haven't no. gotten to technology at all. It's very that's tempting, right, if you kind of focus on the passage as a whole. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. technology. It's a, but that's not the question. The question is in that paragraph, that discussion about Soviet, the Soviet Union in the 60s and 70s it has nothing to do with technology. Absolutely nothing. So answer choice B is gone. Good evidence against answer choice B. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Is it becoming clear that these answers, like, it's black and white? Yeah. Like, it's not, there's no opinion necessary here. Just none. The more I do this test, I used to, you know, argue some of the answer choices in the past when I first started tutoring. I was, I was so young then. And I'd be like, no, I like this one so much better. But and now, the more I do this, I'm like, no, I just wasn't looking at it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> there's either evidence to support it or evidence to eliminate it. That's it's black and white. It really is. It's a well-written test, um, but uh, yeah. And if you're and if you're caught to, like torn between two answer choices, it just means you're missing something. It is black and white. Go and read answer choice C. Great list of differences between the Soviet Union and other countries. Okay, is the purpose of that discussion to list differences between the Soviet Union and other countries? Um. It doesn't even really mention other no. people. No, it so. doesn't. No. So, no. Yeah. All right. So C is gone. What about D? Emphasize the importance of examining historical trends. Hmm. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> no. No. And but so <laughs> many, so many kids are going to pick D, man. So many kids. If you just look at the question and don't go back to the paragraph, you know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, it's got from history. Historical trends. Yeah, it's history. You, uh, you're not uh, reading so the passage. Union, part of history. Yeah, and I can get like why I can get exactly why people would make that connection. But that's, that, you know, has nothing to do with that. The passage has nothing to do with what the author is saying there in referencing the 60s and 70s. She's just introducing the concept of social networking. She's not talking about any historical trends. None. So we can get rid of answer trustee and confirm it. It's a... Any questions about that? No. No. You can see why D would be tempting, right? Yeah. Don't fall for sure. it. That's why you always got to go back. You always got to go back and reread the point that they reference. And sometimes a little bit before, a little bit after. Question number 13. You know exactly how to answer this. Go to read for me. As used in line 45, post most nearly means... What do we do? Publish, transfer, assign, or denounce. Let's input it. Publish. Let's, let's do it. Let's let's inject publish into line 45. All right. But read the whole sentence. So we can take it from we can raise funds directly. We can raise funds directly from individuals, most of whom we don't even know, through websites that allow people to publish descriptions of their projects and generate do donations, investments, or loans. How's that? Um, we can go I didn't back. Let me go like back. Those, what are the other ones for it? Because publish doesn't seem terrible. Okay. I mean, it kind of. It, I mean, you would be able to understand. It. Okay. Let's keep it. Yeah, I think I, I. feel pretty good. About okay. It. Let's try transfer. Transfer. Answer choice All right. B. Mm -hmm. There we go. We can raise funds directly from individuals, most of whom we don't even know, through websites that allow people to. Uh, transfer descriptions of their projects and generate donations, investments, or loans. How's that? Um, publish fits better here. Yeah, yeah. Transfers doesn't make a ton of sense. So let's get rid of B. C. Assign. All right. We can raise funds directly from individuals from individuals, most of whom we don't even know, through websites that allow people to assign descriptions of their products and generate donations, investments, or loans. How's that? Uh, it still does not fit very yeah, well. It's not very good. Try D. 
Denounce. Denounce. We can raise funds directly from individuals, most of whom we don't even know, through websites that allow people to po or to denounce descriptions of their projects and generate donations, investments, or loans. How's that? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about publishing. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why would people be denouncing descriptions of their projects? I don't know. Like, here's this thing that you probably shouldn't. You probably shouldn't buy. It's really a terrible product. Yeah. yeah. Just... By like about once you get to like C on the answer choices, yeah. you pretty much have the sentence memorized. Yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah, just by looking at this word, I don't think it's gonna fit. But well. but publish works well. But also here, I think it's it it, go, it it goes to show how much easier it is to eliminate cor the incorrect answer choices than it is to confirm the right one. You know, because you're like yeah, publish sure. works. You know, but you're not like that's it. Yeah. I mean, it sounds good. Keep it. Right. Yeah, don't but, eliminate it if you but, don't have to. Yeah, yeah, and and there may be times where like two of them you, you're torn between two. Okay, and then you just got to find you know find the best one. But when you read you know B, C, and D, it's like oh no, gosh no, like it's very clear yeah. those aren't right. So process of elimination. Here's your friend. I really recommend it. It's easier to eliminate the wrong ones than to confirm the right ones. Much of the time, maybe most of the time, and that's okay. Because we're always we're going for the best answer choice, not the perfect one. Yeah. Not even the one you're looking for, necessarily. Most nearly means. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. You're doing great. Let's do, let's do some more. Question number 14. All right. The author indicates that in comparison to individuals, traditional organizations have tended to be more innovative or okay, less... Let's stop, let's stop, let's stop, let's stop, let's stop. Before we jump into the answer choices. Do you remember, Katie, do you remember the part of the passage where the author makes a comparison between individuals and traditional organizations. Um, I believe it was like almost at the halfway mark. Yes. Somewhere here on the second page. You have any idea what lines? Um... Let's see. Uh, yeah, we're looking for a comparison between individuals and traditional organizations. Probably around like 55 through some, maybe 65 or something. 55 through 65. I think you're close. Or maybe it's 40, like, not like 45, uh, like 40, like 7. Let's do it. Let's do this. If we're not sure about it, which doesn't seem like we are, look at question number 15. Okay. Which choice provides the best evidence for the answer to the previous question? Okay. So here, the comparison between individuals and traditional organizations is going to be in one of those four sets of lines. Okay. Now, if you know where the comparison is on your own, after you've read 14, just go right to those lines. But if you're like, oh, where is that comparison? Mm, where is that? And you don't know go to the evidence in the next question. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So let's do that. Let's read the lines in question 15. We'll start with the answer choice A, 22 through 26, and see if we can find a comparison between individuals and traditional organizations. Okay. Let's do that. Let's read 22 through 26. All right. Empowered by computing and communication technologies that have been steadily building village-like networks on a global scale, we are infusing more and more of our economic transactions with social connectedness. How's that? Do we uh, see a comparison there between individuals not, and traditional organizations? No. Not at all. So, I wouldn't worry about A too much there. Let's try answer choice B, 40 through 42. 42, 42. And again, we're looking for a comparison between individuals and traditional organizations. Go ahead and read it. We no longer have to rely on bankers or venture capitalists as the only sources of funding for our ideas. Mm. How's that? That's, it. That's it. That's oh, 42, that it. 42. Oh, yeah. okay. Do we uh, see a no. comparison? <laughs> no. No comparison there between individuals and traditional organizations. That's no good. Let's try and choice C. 40 through 47, 350. All right, we are moving away from the dominance and depersonalized world of institutional production and creating a new economy around social connections and social rewards. 
a process I call social structuring. Do we see a comparison there between individuals and traditional organizations, Caden? Um, no. No? No, it's kind of on topic, right? I mean, we see a reference yeah, to institutional production. There. Yeah. But, like, where's the comparison? And what's the comparison? I don't, I don't see one. Yeah, it's just saying we're moving away from it, but yeah. it's not... Yeah. But we're going to this. It's just yeah. Like, but they're still not being compared, right? Do you see yeah. that? They're not being compared. Not there. They're ref- it references both. There's no comparison. Try 66 through 72. All right. So I think from individuals, that's that last word on line 66. All right. Individuals empowered with technologies and the collective intelligence of others in their social network can take on many functions that previously only large organizations could perform often more efficiently at lower cost or no cost at all and with much greater ease. Do we see a comparison there between individuals and traditional organizations? Yes. absolutely. freaking lutely How obvious is that, by the way, when you read those lines? Very obvious. Very obvious, right? If you, as long as you keep the question from 14 in your mind. Very obvious. And it's very obvious... I think the other answer choices just don't address, you know, don't address any comparison. Now, here in 66 through 72, what is the comparison between individuals and traditional organizations? How are they compared? Um, through technology and social networks, how they can work, how they work, and how the people just, individuals can do it even better. Even better. With much ease. Greater ease. And at lower cost or no cost at all. Yeah. Any questions about that? Does that make sense? Um, no. No? Okay, great. That's the comparison. And by the way, you're absolutely right. I mean, we can, we can eliminate A, B, and C for answer choice 15. Very confidently. That's D. Well, let's go back to 14. Read 14 again for me one more time, then we'll read the answer choices. All right. The author indicates that in comparison to individuals, traditional organizations have tended to be... Okay, read answer choice A, please. More innovative and less influential. Okay, so in comparison to individuals, have traditional organizations tended to be more innovative and less influential? No. No, that doesn't make any sense. Not with the comparison as stated in in the passage. Trans choice B. Um, The author indicates that in comparison to individuals, traditional organizations have tended to be larger in size and less subject to regulations. That's not what it goes into either. No, no. What's a regulation? Um, like, is it like almost a, a rule? Yeah, it's exactly what it is. It's a rule or a law. Absolutely. I think in Spanish, regula. Las regulas means the rules. Absolutely. So, yeah, definitely. It's just not what the author's saying, man. <laughs> and, and here it's tempted like, oh, traditional organizations, they're larger in size. Larger in size. Great. You know. Okay. This is not what the author's saying. I mean, it's a true statement. That's fine that they're larger. But the second half doesn't make any sense. And half right is 100% right. wrong. You got to test both parts. Got to. Answer choice C. In comparison to individuals, traditional organizations have tended to be less reliable and less interconnected. Okay. Have traditional organizations tended to be less reliable and less interconnected? No. 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 That's just not the author's point. And we can go back and test. I mean, does it say they're less reliable? Go back and look at it. I don't say anything about less reliable. I see more of the individuals are can perform tasks more efficiently at lower cost, no cost at all with much greater ease. But I don't see anything about reliability or or connectedness. It's just not. Yeah. The point. Try D. In comparison to individuals, traditional organizations have tended to be less efficient and more expensive. Half traditional organizations tend to be less efficient and more expensive. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, it's a little bit tricky because in the passage, the author is directly addressing these amplified individuals. Right. Right. And saying the individuals are more efficient and perform, you know, tasks more cheaply or, you know, at little cost or no cost at all. It's describing the individuals. But the question he was asking about the organizations. Right? Right. But in comparison, right, I mean, if the individuals are more efficient, that means the organizations are less efficient. If the individuals can perform it more uh, cheaply, 
then that means traditional organizations are more expensive. You got to kind of juggle all that, but you can eliminate all the wrong ones. Yeah, relatively easily. And as long as you keep the ideas straight, you can confirm that it's it's indeed deep, but really easy once you kind of find the part of the passage that they're referencing, where you yeah, find the sure. comparison. Does that strategy make sense of starting with the lines? This and this is whenever they give you yes. those that it's a I call them two for one questions. If you know the evidence for fifteen, you're gonna find the answer for fourteen. Or if you know where the evidence for fourteen is on your own, then fifteen's a breeze. You've already found it. You don't even have to look at the other lines. You're like, oh, pff, six, six for seventy-two. There it is. I already read it. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Good. Let's keep going. We've got a couple more here. I think we're, we're going to finish sixteen, seventeen, and then we're going to take a little, uh, we're going to take a little break here, Mr. Matt. All right. Go ahead and read uh, sixteen for me, please. The author recognizes counter arguments to the position she takes in the passage by. Ooh. Counter arguments. What's a counter argument? Um, like uh, a point that's arguing your what you're saying is like a counter argument. I just kind of is it arguing it. for you against. or against you? Against against you. It's arguing again, right? Like counterclockwise means like the opposite of clockwise. Right. So counter means against. So it's the argument against. Yeah. Your argument. It's Spanish. Contra. I think it's actually Latin as well. Against. Versus. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, do you remember where the author addresses the kind of argument to her, her argument? Do you remember where that is? Which kind of argues mm. the other side? Well, first of all, what's her mm. argument? First, let's start, let's make it really clear. What's her argument? Um, that the, like, uh, people on their own, like smaller businesses, are able to do things more efficiently now today through the social. Yeah, yeah, not just small businesses, but like individuals, even. Yeah, yeah, smaller business, yeah, various, you know, small businesses included, but individuals. Others than yeah. big corporations. Yes, exactly. Now, do you remember where she recognizes a counter argument to that argument? I do not. No. Okay. Well then, let's look at let's look at question seventeen. In that nice, look at that. Cool. Okay. All we got is just read those lines and find where there's a kind of argument against her argument. Does that make sense? All right. All right yes. Great. All right. So let's start with thirty-five through thirty-seven. Okay. We can look up their friends on Facebook and watch their YouTube videos. That's we it. And that's it. That's it. I think that's all there is to it. That's 35 to 37. All right. Do we see a counter argument there to her argument? <laughs> no. 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 Not a bit. All right. Uh, let's try lines 40, 74 through 76. All right. I think it starts with uh, a world. Okay. A world in which a large software firm can be displaced by weakened software hackers. I think that's it. That's it. Do we see a counter argument to her argument? No. No, that, like that's her argument. Yeah. Not the counter argument. I don't like B. I'm gonna get. I'm sorry. Get rid of these. Don't like B. Don't like B. Let's try C. Seventy-nine through eighty-four. All right. They threaten. All right. They threaten many established institutions and author a wealth of opportunities for individuals to empower themselves, find rich new connections, and tap into a fast-evolving set of new resources and everything from healthcare to education and science. Do we see a counter-argument to the other argument there? No. 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 In fact, it's just a continuation of our argument, so. C's not looking good. I'm going to get rid of it. Go and read D, 85 through 87. All right. Much has been written about how technology distances us from the benefits of face-to-face -face communication and quality social time. Do we see a counter-argument? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There we do. There we do. Right. Because her argument the whole time was like, hey, we're more connected than ever before. The technology this is great. You know, yeah. All these opportunities and possibilities right here. She addresses the fact that some people say, yeah, much has been written about how technology distances us from the benefits of face-to-face -face communication and quality social time. 
And she didn't recognize the validity of that too, right? Later, says, I think those are important concerns. And that's smart, yeah. by the way. If, you, if you've got an argument, if you're trying to convince people of something, it's always smart. It's always good to recognize the other side of the argument. It's always good to. Right. Right. Otherwise, you're just like a cheerleader. It's like, rah, yeah. rah, rah, my side. You know, but like, if you actually like, well, I've considered things. Here's what these people are saying. And they've got some valid points. But here's what I'm saying. This is why I think my position makes more sense. Right. It's good form. It's just smart. Yeah. Right. And, and if you're really, truly willing to recognize the other side of the argument, there's some intellectual honesty in that. It's also good rhetorically. Like, it's just argument style. Like, you know, if you want to win an argument with someone, I always recommend, like, recognize the validity of their perspective. You're like, I totally yeah, get what you think that. From. I totally get that. You make a great point here and here. And then crush them. <laughs> and then be like, but this is why you're wrong. Right? Because it's like, you understand my perspective and you have a different perspective. Right? Yeah. It's just good form. When I have students write like persuasive essays, I always have them start actually with the counter argument. For that huh. reason. Okay. Here the author ends with it. That's fine. It's not a big deal. I'm yeah. Just, it's kind of like, it's a little bit of an afterthought, Same but it's still right. good. Okay. Is that clear that that's a counter argument? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So anyway, D is looking really good for for uh, for 18. Let's go back, to, or 17. Let's go back to 16. Now that we've found the counter argument. Read, read, read the question again, and then read answer choice A. The author recognizes counter argument to the position she takes in the passage by acknowledging the risks and drawbacks associated with new technologies and social networks. Does the author recognize counter arguments to the position she takes in the passage by acknowledging the risks and drawbacks associated with new technologies and social networks? I mean, she says that they wouldn't like talk to people face to face as much, so I wouldn't know if that's really. Is she acknowledging the risks and drawbacks associated with new technologies and social networks in her counter argument? Yes or no? Uh, I mean, yes. Yes. What risks and drawbacks? Um, the social connections, like, but face-to-face, um, yeah, just face-to-face communication and quality social time. Well, the lack of face-to-face yeah. communication and quality social time. But the, you know, how we're distanced from the benefits of face-to-face communication and quality social time. That's the risk. That's the drawback. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I mean, you have to say yes to that. It yeah. may, it, I mean, it may not be like... It may not phrase the counter argument exactly in the way that you would. Right. But does the author recognize counter arguments to the position she takes in the passage by acknowledging the risks and drawbacks associated with the new technologies and social networks? The answer yes. is yes, especially when you read the counter argument from lines from, from lines 85 through 87. You have to say yes. I know you wanted to say no. I could sense it. Yeah. Or you were tempted to. But you're forced to say yes. Answer choice A looks pretty good. Read answer choice B. All right. Admitting that some people spend too much time unproductively, unproductively on the internet. Does the author recognize counter arguments to the decisions she takes in the passage by admitting that some people spend too much time unproductively on the internet? No. No, she does not. That is insane. I mean, don't get me wrong. People, too, people do spend too much time unproductively on the internet. Myself yeah. included. Oh, boy. But, uh, but the author doesn't do that anywhere in the passage, let alone in the counter argument. So no way. Try C. Um, drawing a, an analogy between conditions today and conditions in the Soviet unions of the 1960s and 1970s. Does the author recognize counter arguments to the position she takes in the passage by drawing an analogy between conditions today and conditions in the Soviet Union in the 60s and 70s? No. No. Terrible. D. Con- uh, conceding that the drawbacks of social structuring may prove over time to outweigh the benefits. Does the author recognize the kind of arguments to the position she takes in the passage by conceding... What does she concede mean? Uh, to, like, lead on? Mm, uh, you're thinking, like, proceed. Here, concede means to, like, admit. Uh, to admit. Reluctantly. Okay. Does the author concede or admit that the drawbacks of social structuring may prove over time to outweigh the benefits? No. No. In fact, the opposite of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, she's like, yeah, there's some problems. But I think the benefits of social structuring outweigh the drawbacks. Not the drawbacks outweigh the benefits. Yeah. Do you see how much easier it is to eliminate the wrong answer choices? Yes. 
Think of those terms. You're not going to find the perfect one. Generally. Generally. I think most of the time when you've read the writing shows, you're like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's been like yeah, that kind of... It could work. And then I'm like, what's well, that, that could work. I'm like, oh, that could yeah. work. Okay. But then when you see the wrong, it's like, no. No. Yeah. Uh-uh. Ridiculous. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. if, if, if that's how you're responding to the answer choices, you're doing this test the right way. And that's cool. okay. Okay. Com I mean, compare that to how most students do this. Most students are like, they read all four answer choices and go with the one they like the most. Without I mean, like testing, without thinking about evidence or anything like that. Like, yeah, that if, you're, if you're just doing that kind of blindsidedly. Like, like it's just going to be, it's going to be terrible. And you yeah. go step by step, and you, you, you compare each of the answers with the evidence in the text. It is black and white. It's almost mathematical. Okay? Okay. Okay. But you see now also how important it is to just have a good handle on your reading comprehension in general. So there's, yeah. there's two skills here. Again, you've got to, you've got to have the higher level of academic vocabulary, so you've got the reading comprehension. And that's task yeah, number one. And that's going to be that's a that's a long term game that you're going to have to play. You got to play it because you got to boost that reading comprehension. But then also, if you can combine that with approaching the questions we're approaching, you're testing every answer choice based on evidence in the text. You're going to be in great shape on this test. Do you have any questions right now? Um, no. No. Okay. Let's take a little three minute break. We'll come back. We'll answer some graph questions and then approach another uh, a new passage we've not seen yet. Right, on this cool. uh, practice test, okay? All right, I'll see you in just a little bit, Kate. See ya. All right.